nutrition and bone health is determined by so many factors. And obviously, nutrition is one of the most important ones. As we know, that plays a very important part in overall health. The nutrients required for proper bone health is known to everyone. Every mother knows it. Every family member knows it. You need calcium. You need calcium and you need vitamin D. This is a very well-known fact. But uh, the fact is that we need even some more nutrients, like we need magnesium, we need phosphates, and we also need some vitamin K for proper nutrient, uh, maintain, nutritional maintain, maintenance of the bone, not only in formation, but also in maintenance. The daily requirements of uh, the various nutrients are also fairly well known to most of us in all specialties of medicine and also to the general public. You need about 1000 milligram of calcium every day. And you need about uh, 600 international units of vitamin D every day. 600 international units of vitamin D is equivalent to 15 micrograms. As we know, one microgram is of vitamin D is equivalent to 40 international units. So uh, even if we don't go into the nitty gritty of all this, we should take care to get adequate amounts of calcium from the diet and the vitamin D from various sources. Vitamin D can be obtained from diet as well as from sunshine, as we'll see a bit later. The important food items which uh, one must include in the diet, calcium rich foods and vitamin D rich foods. Calcium rich foods is, you know, there's something which is known to everyone. Calcium is obtained from uh, animal sources as well as from plant sources. From animal sources, you get it in milk and dairy products. You get it in cheese. And, uh, you know, you get it in curd, yogurt. And plant sources, you get it in green leafy vegetables. This may not be easily perceptible because we have already been you know, as tuned to the fact that milk is rich in calcium, so it looks at white, but green substances also contain calcium. Green leafy vegetables are an important source of calcium. And uh, various uh, seeds and nuts are rich in calcium. And also another uh, important food item is tofu. Tofu is something which gives a lot of calcium and also some phytosterols for the menopausal years. So we should try to include tofu also in the diet of people in this age group. Also, there are certain foods to be avoided. We should uh, realize that excess of sodium and excess of protein, you know, that, uh, that counteracts the actions of calcium. So if, uh, you know, you should obviously, you should consume proteins and sodium, but to a you know optimum extent, not more than what is required. If it is more than what is required, then it interferes with the action of calcium. And uh, everyone needs to be aware of all these facts in order to gain proper calcium. You know, uh, maintain the calcium or bone bank right from the early years of life. This should be ingrained in every family member's mind that nutrition is one of the most important components of proper bone health. So moving on, uh, we see the role of calcium, dietary calcium, as I've already said, there are so many foods which are rich in calcium, we have to consume them. And medicinal calcium preparations, a lot of calcium preparations are available, right from calcium carbonate to calcium uh, malate, calcium ascorbate. And uh, the important thing is, that uh, calcium citrate mallet, uh, we should choose a calcium preparation which is easily absorbed and which does not cause a lot of side effects. Side effects of calcium are, you know, nausea, vomiting, constipation, and absorption is affected by various factors, whether you uh, take other food items with it. For many uh, people are given iron preparations as well. So taking iron preparations and calcium preparations simultaneously you know, that interferes with the absorption. So you should space the medications apart from for at least two to three hours. And some people have had, uh, you know, um, some surgeries on the intestinal tract, like, uh, you know, 
part of the intestine has been resected with anastomosis. These people have difficulty in absorption. Also inflammatory bowel disease. There is difficulty in absorption, celiac disease also. These may not be that common, but we should be aware that people who have such problems, they, are, you know, they have the problem of proper calcium absorption. And after absorption, you have assimilation. The, pro, the calcium which is absorbed must also be assimilated properly so that it goes into the right direction and to the right organ. And for proper bone uh, metabolism, you need phosphates as well, and you need vitamin D as well. So as we will see in the next slide, the role of sunshine. Now this, everyone knows that sunshine is equivalent to vitamin D. But it is not that uh, you know sunshine at any hour is good. Usually the morning hours where you have the ultraviolet radiation. And uh, the amount of exposure, the amount of exposure should be roughly about two hours. And uh, one should expose uh, the, you know, the skin in such a way, if one is covered with heavy clothing, which covers uh, you know, the full sleeves of the hands and uh, till the lower part of the hand, then you cannot absorb calcium properly. So one should take care of that. So if you expose the hands properly with the forearms and the arms, then there is more chance of absorption. And also the color of the skin. You know? Uh, you know, in dark-skinned people, it may be difficult to absorb, but then uh, they have to take calcium from other sources if they are found deficient. And, uh, you know, so it is important to measure the calcium uh, vitamin D levels in people who are prone to vitamin D deficiency. And nowadays, vitamin D is, uh, is touted as a panacea for various ailments. Uh, it's becoming very commonplace to test vitamin D levels. And uh, uh, because vitamin D is not just a vitamin, its action is like that of a hormone. So proper levels of vitamin D have to be maintained and sunshine or sunlight is one of the sources because it converts uh, you know, the folic sulfurol in the skin to the active form of vitamin D by later conversion to the liver and the kidneys. Okay, so as we move on, uh, the role of hormones. Estrogen is a hormone which supports bone growth. And after the menopause, the levels of estrogen drop, as all of you know. So after the menopause or right from the climacteric years, women become vulnerable to you know, uh, weak bones and there is a more chance of osteoporosis after the menopause. So this has an important a role in uh, the medication because if you replace estrogens in the right way and in the right route and the right duration, right dose, then you can maintain bone mass for a considerable time to the, proper, to the optimum extent. Now, parathyroid hormone, this is actually a bone forming hormone. This is also used in medication in the form of periparatide, which is given in cases of severe osteoporosis, particularly those who have had fractures, fragility fractures. And uh, parathyroid hormone causes osteogenesis. It supports the osteoblasts. So uh, compared to other medications which are used for osteoporosis, parathormone is a real bone forming hormone. Steroids. People who have been on steroids for a long time, like asthmatics or autoimmune conditions, or those who have had cancer chemotherapy, in them there is higher chance of osteoporosis because this interferes with proper bone formation and bone maintenance. So we know that uh, hormones have a very important role to play. Vitamin D, as I've already said, uh, it's absorbed, it's obtained from the diet as well as from sunlight. That I've already said, you know, uh, calcium I have said, but for vitamin D, you know, there are so many plant sources and animal sources, particularly eggs and milk, for which, you know, uh, the important thing is the uh, cholecalciferone 
and arbocalciferol. Arbocalciferol is a dietary vitamin D and cholecalciferol is the one which is present to the skin. And uh, calcitriol is the active metabolite. Vitamin D is actually, you know, converted into 25 hydroxy vitamin D in the liver and 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol in the kidneys, which is finally the active metabolite, which has the action on the target organs. And vitamin K is no less important. Nowadays, we include vitamin K also in medication for supporting bone health. So this also has to be realized. Moving on, uh, this is a paper uh, which was published in Chemical Biology in 2014. It says vitamin D3 is made from, made in the skin from 7-dehydrocholesterol under the influence of ultraviolet light. And vitamin D2 is derived from plant sterol, argosterol. It is metabolized first to 25 hydroxy vitamin in the liver and then to the finally active form that is 125 dihydroxy vitamin D in the kidneys. So the, both the liver and the kidneys are important for proper activity of the vitamin D component of bone formation. Now, rule of exercise is something which is so important that it should not, should not be undermined. An active lifestyle is a sure guarantee for proper bone health. There are so many types of exercises, weight-bearing exercises, endurance exercises, stretching exercises, or relaxation techniques, or muscle building exercises, aerobic exercises. Important thing is, if you do weight-bearing exercises, like walking, jogging, hopping, skipping, then, you know, that gives a greater impetus for proper bone formation. Whereas if you do uh, you know, exercises uh, which promote balance and, you know, strengthening of the musculature, that uh, causes improvement in balance and uh, the exercises which uh, cause, uh, you know, increased oxygen consumption, like aerobic exercises, they improve the overall cardiac health. And also there are so many uh, exercise aids, which are, uh, you like stretch bands and you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, techniques like arm curls and uh, wall uh, push-up exercises. The important thing is the duration of exercise should be adhered to. You should, uh, you know, exercise at least four or five times a week, uh, say about 30 to 45 minutes a day. But the precautions are that, uh, you know, if you have any ailment which makes you prone to cardiac disease or uh, if you are prone to ischemic uh, heart disease, then of course, or brain strokes, or if you have serious balance problems, then these exercises must be done under medical supervision. So finally, we must say that exercise is very important for maintenance of proper bone health.